it's Monday, the last day of February already. February 28th, 22. Also happens to be my anniversary, my lovely bride. So happy anniversary, sweetheart. I am very grateful you have put up with me for 33 years. So thank you. Looking forward to many more years and an eternity ahead. Let's get started. We are going to be talking over the next few weeks about Jesus Jiu-Jitsu, the art of developing integrity. Now, integrity is a word that is one of my favorite words. And if you think of it, I have all different ways of, of modeling integrity, from buildings to bridges. But what I'd like you to think of from a biblical perspective and now, you have to remember that one of the things Jesus warred against most during his ministry was hypocrisy. I think we have a firm handle on what hypocrisy looks like. It's saying one thing and doing another. It's what the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were charged with time and time again by Jesus. You call yourself righteous, and yet you sin the same way as everyone else. You set yourself up as, as men of God, but inside you are empty, full of junk. So that's hypocrisy, being a hypocrite. The opposite of that is being a man and woman of integrity, that your words match your deeds, that no matter what setting you're in, whether that's sitting on the pew in church on Sunday or working your job on a Tuesday afternoon, God can be found within you. And this is art of integrity is developed over time as we allow God to transform us. Now, back to Jesus Jiu-Jitsu. Yes, I've chosen it mostly because of the alliteration, because of the how, how clever it sounds. However, there's also some truth here. If you know anything about martial arts, which I know very little, but the little I do know is that it's about using your opponent's strength against them. Jiu-Jitsu, it's about getting your, your opponent off balance. It's primarily used as a a defensive skill. And it's something that parallels exactly the tools that God provides for us. See, one of the things that the enemy wants to convince you is that you are defenseless. You're no longer able to use all of the skills you learned in the world, defend yourself, and now you are just this, this innocent lamb being led to the slaughter. Jesus reminds us time and time again that we are not defenseless. That the weapons and the skills that God provides are better than anything the world has to offer. And they bring light and love and de-escalate situations that otherwise would have led you into confrontation and drawn you out of that place of integrity. You see, the devil wants to bait you 
as often as he can today. To make you look like a hypocrite. Oh sure, they go to church on Sunday, but watch this. Our integrity is challenged regularly. So why I have chosen this topic is because the student has become the master. Yep, just like in the old days, Kung Fu. On Thursday, the office at Geek SI was, was very crowded and very chaotic. And there was issues springing up left and right. The noise was all over the place. Interruptions. And I was, well, I probably have to back up a little. I'm in the middle of the Geek SI office at a desk because we are waiting for approval from the city and my quiet little nook, an office space where I would normally be seeking God and developing sermons and all of those things happens right in the middle of, of a great bit of congestion. And I enjoy that most days, but Thursday was, was a day that was difficult. And then we had a delivery of office chairs and 10 office chairs. And eventually those made it to the back of the room about 10 feet from my desk. And we've been needing office chairs because the office chairs that we purchased a few years ago, now when you sit on them, they they sink to the low rider position. And John had more than enough hands because we were hiring two new interns. So that became a task. And it was the last straw. Especially as John sought approval and went about his business and it made me very cranky. Thankfully, I found refuge in Denez's office, returned to my desk at the end of the day where John had, had dismissed his interns and we were sitting there having an opportunity for a conversation and I brought it up and I still admittedly was a bit cranky about not being able to work at my desk. This is where the student becomes the master. Because it wasn't me operating in my great skills of Jesus jujitsu that calmed the situation. It was the opposite. John received my complaint that he had been building chairs a few feet from my desk and hadn't been aware or paying attention to what I was doing or what I was trying to accomplish. But he did it in such a way that he received it with such kindness and, and took all of the things that I was just and deflected it. Very similar to the Snicker commercials, if you've ever seen it, of the cranky person being Yanita Snickers. And that's where I recognized that John had developed a skill set that was new. And he had learned how to engage without it turning into conflict. He had learned to be able to receive a complaint and not respond in kind. We're going to go through this week these nine goals and achievements, just as in jujitsu or any other martial arts. They're given belts as they progress through different skills 
And when they have all of those skills, it's, it, that's the same thing that we're doing here. And so first goal achieved is engagement. How do you engage with somebody who is coming at you? And that's called kindness. Then some of the other skills that you will develop is honesty. I'll have to call you back, Dave. Is honesty and trust, humility, sincerity, patience, forgiveness, loyalty, and bravery. Now, I know you've heard some of these on this list, all of these on this list before, and they've sounded like sacrifice. It sounded like you were having to give up your strong weapons and utilize these wimpy ones. I want to demonstrate, more importantly, God wants to demonstrate over the next few weeks and how effective they are. They're as effective as the weapon or the skill set that John used against me on Thursday. For, the, for after him engaging in the proper way, my crankiness just melted away and we were able to have a very good conversation. And I found myself, instead of wanting to pick him apart of all the little things that, that I could pick him apart about, I wanted to encourage him as my brother. Do you see how Jesus won in that potential conflict? Just by proper engagement. Now, you may look at this list, and we'll go through this list as we travel the next couple of weeks, but you may recognize it as Many of them are found in 1 Corinthians 13, better known as the love chapter, often referred to as the attributes of God himself. And so as an introduction today, we are going to start here in 1 Corinthians 13, but I want you to recognize that the skill set that God wants to develop in you has been the same attributes that he has been known by for all the ages. And they aren't the wimpy, discounted items now that you've given up all the weapons of the world. They are powerful and they are, they are capable of accomplishing a great deal. 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it's not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. It does not say that love is the bargain basement if when you don't have anything else to use all God left us. Love never fails. Now that's a skill set worth pursuing. How can I love in every interaction? How can I disarm the enemy every step of the day? If he is choosing to test my integrity, what is my greatest weapon against that test? Love. 
Join me in the next two weeks as we discover the weapons, the skill set taught by Jesus himself. And I hope in this new framework that you will discover that he has not left you. That you will be stronger and capable of defending yourself better than you ever had before. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for friends. We thank you, Lord, for your heart. We thank you, Lord, for this skill that you've made available to us that we, unfortunately, do not access enough. We pray, Lord, that you will develop in us the ability to defend the charges of hypocrisy and become men and women of integrity, worthy of your name and capable of fending off the aggression of the world and the devil himself. Help us to be better encouragers for one another Help us to be better encouragers for those that you place in our life for just a moment. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, see you back here as we learn how to engage. Know that I love you and I miss you. Till we see each other again, please be good.